Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Just want to make sure everyone caught on to how unusual that story was that Ron read for us today from the book of Acts. For background, the book of Acts is a fascinating and important book for understanding the earliest days of the church. We think it was written by the same person who wrote the Gospel of Luke, so it's kind of like a sequel. And it starts, as we heard at our Ascension Day service on Thursday, with Jesus ascending to heaven. That key event marks a kind of transition point as the history of Christianity shifts from the person of Jesus to the Acts of the Apostles, as the book is properly known, into the work of the Holy Spirit in the Church. The first part of Acts focuses on Peter and on his ministry among the people of Israel, most of whom did not seem to be so interested in the story of a Messiah who dies on the cross like a common criminal. About halfway through Acts, we hear about a man named Saul, a self-described Pharisee who was busy trying to stamp out the Jesus movement. The Pharisees fervently believed that God was coming to restore Israel, but they also believed that the Jews had to be strictly observant of the law of Moses, or God would not come. Saul viewed the followers of Jesus as heretics who threatened to lead the Jews away from their true faith and thus prevent the restoration that God had in store. But then an amazing thing happens in chapter 9 of Acts. Saul has a dramatic experience of conversion on the way to confront Jesus' followers in Damascus. He's blinded and addressed by the voice of Jesus himself. He becomes Paul, turning all of his energy towards the spreading of the gospel. The second half of Acts is all about Paul, his three missionary journeys and his success in spreading the good news among non-Jews, among Gentiles. This part of the Bible, along with Paul's letters, is extra important for us because Paul is our patron saint. We are St. Paul's church. So his story has special meaning for us. And what a story it is. In his second letter to the Corinthians, Paul describes his experience in mission as having included afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. I'm honestly surprised no one has made a Netflix series based on Paul's travels. How about the drama we heard today? Paul, together with his co-worker Silas, arrives in Macedonia, where he meets an enslaved woman who could see into the future. Her power of spiritual sight allows her to recognize Paul for who he is, and more importantly, for the Most High God that he represents. Paul is trying to do his work, and this woman keeps shouting out, kind of stealing his thunder, to the point where he gets annoyed and exercises her demon. Her liberation from demon possession seems like a great thing, except that the people who owned her are not very happy. They made a lot of money charging people to have their fortunes read. So Paul and Silas are beaten and thrown in jail. Things only get weirder when an earthquake strikes and the doors to the prison are broken open. Again, seems like a great thing, but not to the jailkeeper. He expects to be blamed for the escape of these prisoners, so he prepares to kill himself. Paul won't let that happen. Paul proclaims the good news to the man and to his household such that all of them are baptized 
and the story has a happy ending. Stories, even strange stories like this one, are important to our faith because of the truth that lives in them, even more than the facts. Take the story of Noah. It's a terrific story. Children love this story, the animals, two by two. But it also speaks about God's judgment when we don't live according to God's will. The faith and obedience of one righteous person and the difference that person can make when she or he trusts in God. The possibility of new beginnings when all seems lost, and the power of God to renew creation, the generosity of God, and the truth that with God, there's always another chance. Or how about the calling of David as king after all of his brothers have been passed over? Again, a dramatic story with a deeper meaning in the words, the Lord does not see as mortals see, but the Lord looks on the heart. We should never assume that we aren't enough, that God couldn't possibly be looking to us. Sometimes it is the least and the last, the one who wasn't even given consideration, who is the one God needs for the task at hand. This amazing story we heard today, though, less familiar, similarly carries some deeper meaning. It's a story about the liberating power of God that can free people from slavery, the power of God to heal and to make people whole, the inability of powers to contain and stamp out the truth. The story announces that God is working in the world to end oppression and injustice and to establish the reign of love. God overcomes violent resistance and works through our faith and perseverance to renew creation. Paul's story is all about what God is doing. And as Paul's church, we can claim that role for ourselves. As the Easter season ends and we turn from this time of thanksgiving and celebration for the resurrection of Jesus to a season which focuses on the work of the Holy Spirit in the church, the question becomes, how is this gospel story our story? How is the good news being proclaimed and made known in our lives? How are we partnering with God to write the next chapter of the story of salvation? How do we build our faith so that like Noah, we can be righteous servants of God, even in the face of a flood of challenges? Like David, we can believe that God may be calling us, yes, us, to take the lead. Like Paul, we can have the courage to bring the good news to those who need to hear it most. The gospel story, the Easter story, is our story. Ours to claim, ours to celebrate, and ours to live every single day. Amen. Amen.